All right, let's uh, let's begin our discussion on relevant uh, versus irrelevant costs. And so, believe it or not, we have uh, you know we we know that we have all types of costs in managerial accounting. We've got uh, variable costs, fixed costs, and mixed costs. And so, you know, uh, when we when we talk about it, is a cost relevant or not? You say, well, of course it's relevant. But what we're what we're really saying is, going forward from this point, right? Do we have the ability to incur a cost in the future? Do we have the ability to a to avoid incurring a cost in the future? And if we have to incur costs, are there is there ever going to be a difference? Uh, between uh, multiple or alternatives. So, you know, we may have scenario A and scenario B and scenario C, and they have uh, different levels of cost. So if we get to choose between those and then make a decision that obviously has not yet been made, well, then we have a relevant cost. Conversely, you know, if we've already made that choice and we've already incurred the cost, think about fixed costs. Fixed costs are, are not always irrelevant, but any fixed costs that are uh, unavoidable, we're going to have them anyway, they become irrelevant. They're still going to impact our bottom line, certainly, uh, but for future decision-making purposes, uh, they have no value. All right, so let's just get right to it then with question number one, which is a true-false question. It says, relevant costs or future costs that differ among competing decision alternatives. And so that is precisely what I just said. So this is going to end up being a true statement, but that doesn't really help us too much. So for a cost to be relevant, the first thing that we have to do is it has to be a future cost. This is absolutely critical. Okay? It can't be anything that we've already incurred. Uh, the second thing um, is that there has to be a difference between competing uh, decision alternatives. Okay, so that could be scenario A to, to spend money on this and scenario B to spend money on something else. Or it could be a situation where we're talking about uh, scenario A is to spend the money and scenario B is to not spend the money. And that would be a competing uh, alternative as well. Okay, so question number two here says blank are costs that require future expenditures of cash or other resources. Okay, and so we've got some uh, choices here and our answer is going to be outlay costs. So whenever we're talking about an outlay cost is we have made a decision to incur cost uh, for some event, whether it is a project, uh, uh, a product line, whatever the case may be in a business setting. So the costs that are associated with that would be an outlay uh, cost and it is very you know an outlay cost is going to be uh, re a relevant cost as well because we chose we chose whatever path we're about to go down based on what a competing set of decision alternatives okay and so once we have accepted what we choose to uh, spend money on, uh, any costs associated with that decision become outlay costs. Now, they haven't happened yet. That's important to recognize, uh, but we, we, we call those outlay costs. Okay, question three is another true-false, and it says sunk costs are the result of past decisions. Therefore, they are always relevant to future decisions. So hopefully we've done some review and we know what sunk costs are. 
So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to tell you what the answer is, and then um, I'm going to tell you why it's the answer. So our answer here is false, but I want to point out that the first part of our comment here where it says sunk costs are the result of past decisions, this is absolutely true. However, because it's true and because they're the result of past decisions, they are always irrelevant. So not relevant, but irrelevant. So again, the example that we you all we, you know we talk about uh, in the class and, and elsewhere, you know, somebody says something to you like, "I can't sell it to you for that. I've got more than that in it." Okay, that's what we call the sunk cost fallacy, or that's a simplified version of the sunk cost fallacy. What you paid for something is completely irrelevant. Uh, you had an opportunity uh, to make that decision, you made it, and, if that, and after you've spent the money, it becomes a sunk cost. And then the only thing that matters is not how much you paid for it, but what it's worth. What benefit does it provide to you? Okay. Question number four says, which of the following statements about sunk cost is true? Sunk costs are the result of past decisions. Well, that's what we just said right here. So we know that A is uh, the answer, but we have an all of the above here. So let's make sure that the others are not as well. Sunk costs are never relevant to decisions. Well, same thing. We just said that they are always irrelevant. And if they are always irrelevant, then they are never relevant. So it looks like our answer is probably going to be D. Uh, answer choice C says sunk costs are never relevant to decisions. Uh, I'm sorry, I read this. I read B again. C says sunk costs do not vary between uh, decision alternatives. Well, here's the thing. The answer is D. Now, I don't particularly care for answer choice C. Um, there is no decision. There is no decision when, when we're talking about a sunk cost. There was the there was a decision, but we we've already made the decision, all right. So at one point there probably was a difference between decision alternatives. We made our choice and incurred a sunk cost, and hopefully one that benefits us. Okay. Question five says the Titanic hit an iceberg and sank. In deciding whether or not to salvage the ship, its book value is a uh, relevant cost, sunk cost, opportunity cost, or discretionary cost. All right. No pun intended, but the answer is, in fact, B. This is a sunk uh, cost. Um, so, you know, what is book value? Book value is just historical cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, so here's the thing. We spent whatever money we spent on the Titanic. We didn't have to build the Titanic. Somebody built it. That was their choice. Okay, that was their choice. And so they made that choice and started taking depreciation on the ship, at least in theory they did, right? So it's not so much about the book value. It's the fact that we purchased the ship in the first place. The cost of the ship, whether we're talking about the historical cost or the book value, uh, is a sunk cost. Now, if we had, if we had said, um, in the, if we had changed this right here, let's see, where's number five? In deciding whether or not to salvage the ship, its market value, if we had changed the word book to market, then the answer would have been A. Okay, but that's not the case uh, here. All right. So let's look at a couple more, and let's look at one more question. It says uh, disposal value and salvage value are relevant, irrelevant costs because they deal with the future or the past, all right? So we have to know what disposal value is 
we have to know what salvage value is. All right, so here's the thing. Disposal value is equivalent, equivalent, and it's basically the same thing as market value. What can we get for an asset if we sell it right now? Okay, we haven't sold it yet though. So that's still upcoming. Salvage value is an estimate of what we can, what we would be able to sell an asset for at the time we retire it. Okay, so we would say then that disposal value and salvage value are both relevant costs because they deal with the future. All right. Okay. I think that's good for this video. We're going to close this out and then we'll uh, start another one right away.